You are not the first responders. You are the last resort. Stand down. None of you have to go. But we are the only help they have. How's it going everyone? Daniel Rodriguez here and it's time to review another movie. This time it is the latest movie to be directed by Michael Bay. It is based on a true story uh, back from 2012. You know, these are real actual characters, I mean real people from the world being put onto screen. Uh, portrayed by James Batch, Dale, and John Krasinski are both in this movie, man. And let me tell you, this is probably my second or third most anticipated movie for January. Uh, and of course, every January there's usually a, a, a military, you know, uh, surrounded movie that comes out like 2014 or 13. I think 14 was Lone Survivor with Mark Wahlberg. And then 2015 was American Sniper. And now we have... Benghazi, the secret soldiers of Benghazi. So, this is a non spoiler review. I'm just going to give you the pros, give you the cons, tell you whether or not you should go check it out in theaters or wait for rental or don't even check it out at all, uh, whether it's worth watching or not. So, let me, uh, I'm just going to tell you the basics, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Thanks for joining. And, uh, man, if you haven't checked other reviews, The Revenant, I mean, The Forest, upcoming right along to The Finest Hours, many upcoming uh, within the next few weeks, man. So,. This movie alone, man, uh, it's a really intense movie. It's rated R. I'm at, I, when I went to the theater, I was like, oh my god, it's rated R. I thought it was a PG-13 movie. Michael Bay going hard on us, man. Transformers. There's no Transformers up in this one. Ladies and gentlemen, here's my non-spoiler review for 13 Hours, The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi. Walking out of this movie, I do have to say that the most enjoyable thing about this movie was the action. And Michael Bay is really good at capturing action, even though he could push it over the limits. He could make it too long. He could make a fight scene an hour long, like in Transformers, where it's an hour-long battle and you want to walk out. Now, he does go crazy on the explosions, and there are a lot of explosions in this movie. I mean, there's, like, you throw a grenade, and there's no there's one grenade, and it's like, boom, and there's nothing explosive, and there's like ten other grenades bombs that go off all of a sudden, and it's just sparks everywhere, it's fake bombs exploding, all that stuff. He goes over the top sometimes, and he does go over the top of this movie, not as bad as Transformers, but the action in here is as realistic as can be. Now, will I see Lone Survivor and American Sniper have better action? Yes. But in here, it's it's more of a different style, because it's, you know, Benghazi 2012, it's more gritty AK-47 against the military, and I mean, it's just more intense. This movie is a very intense movie. Uh, I mean, rated R, like I said, there's limbs coming off, there's people getting ha blown away in half. I mean, it's literally, it's not like a Rambo movie, but it is pretty intense, man. Uh, I was surprised how intense it was. Like I said, I didn't know it was going to be rated R, so the action here was very well put together. But Michael Bay does have that shaky cam feeling, like when there's a chase, there's like a, the cameraman is like, like, the, like he's running, like it's almost like Cloverfield in a way, kind of, kind of weird because the Cloverfield trailer came out, but uh, that's not going to be uh, like a camera, you know, but that was literally uh, the, the, the camera handle and everything. I mean, I literally feel, because Michael Bay loves to be right next to the camera, he always, he's a camera guy, not like all the time, but I mean like, he loves to be next to the camera all the time, he's one of those directors, and I, I literally, I almost feel like, when there's an action chase scene, Michael Bay's like right behind him running with a camera or something, like all going into action. I could have got a picture of that. So that's what's kind of going on there. And then the action scenes, you can't really tell sometimes. Like, it's like the, the camera moves too fast where you can't really see the action at times. It's just boom, 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 gunshot, and then you see just guys go down. It, it's kind of just off a little bit. I'm not talking about editing, no, no, all the editing was good in here, but just itself as in the, the the camera sometimes with the chase and the shaky cam it kind of gets annoying but like i said the action that's kind of the action is good and bad the action it's gritty and it's enjoyable to watch then it's like slow moments and then it gets back to the action and that's what really picks up the acting was really good in here man i do have to say I, I, when i was walking in i wasn't expecting oscar level acting nothing like that and just an enjoyable movie and i will say the acting was really good man everyone had an awesome role everyone fit the part everyone felt real james badge dell was really good in here i didn't even know that was james badge dell when i saw the credits i was like that was james badge dell last time i saw him was world war z 
Uh, and he's like, damn it, the Z got me. And, you know, now he's here, so that's really cool. John Krasinski, man, he is a badass in here, having with a beard. And, I mean, he, he's viable, even though his voice is a little, not really that military-ish. And not, not like that, but you know what I mean. John Krasinski's voice doesn't sound like, <laughs> he doesn't sound like a badass. But when he's up there, man, I tell you, man, he, he's a badass. So, uh, the cast itself awesome. Uh, all the characters are very likable. That's what I like about this movie is there's not one character that's really like, uh, like you have the funny guy, you have the, the almost sort of religious type of and the Lord said today, you know, all that, and then you have the, the, the father, and I'm, all of them are fathers, but you have, like, that type of thing where you have the funny guy, you have the religious guy, you have the, the, the I'll take all the pain guy, and then you have the, the guy who's recently a father, you have the guy who wants to get back, you know, all those type of characters going on, man. And that's what I like about this, because they're so likable. And they're really not that annoying, man. And some some of the, 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 the soldiers, like the team, doesn't get much screen time as, you know, James Batch, Joe John Krasinski. Uh, so that was kind of one thing where I was like the religious guy in, the, in here who reads the Bible or something. I was like, where did you come from? Like, I don't remember you getting introduced in the beginning. And then I was like, oh, okay, you got introduced in the beginning. Welcome to Club Man or whatever. When he says that, I was like, okay, that's that guy. Because they, they all have beards, and they're like three. There's three guys that have like the same sort of beard, and it's kind of when they have a helmet on, you can't tell who's who. That's kind of one of a con. It's like who's who? Who's getting? Who's getting? You know what's going on? But I will say the characters are likable. Uh, like I said, and the acting was really good. For the most part, this is a well-directed film, man. Uh, it has a beautiful aerial shots, man, from the air. I mean, it has really, really nice, beautiful shots. Uh, it does have some of that Transformers feeling, like the camera's tilted that way, and you feel like like John Krasinski's talking to Optimus Prime or something. Uh, you have that type of feel there, like, yeah, it's Michael Bay. But then again, I will say that it is a very, um, really good directed film. It, you could, it has like a filter on it, like there's like a, a color filter there where it makes it a little dark. Like I said earlier, some of the directing, you know, the, the, the chase scenes and everything are kind of annoying. It kind of hurt my head at times, especially since I was like older person here, older person there. I'm all, I'm all, all like bundled up and everything. I'm trying to like, you know, breathe and then I'm seeing the screen and then the chase scene is like, ah, 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 like you could hear the cameraman like, uh, like go like that and everything. So you definitely, no, you can't actually hear the camera, man, that's a joke, but the chase, you get it, like, the chase, it's kind of, uh, it, it, it's annoying at times, man, it, it just gets on my nerves and gives me a headache uh, every now and then. There are a few slow moments in the movie, now, the slow moments are not bad, I mean, it's not like I want to walk out type of feeling. But no, in Michael Bay, there's that dialogue in there where it's not that great, and Chuck, Chuck Hogan wrote the screenplay for this, and Chuck Hogan, I believe, if this is the same Chuck Hogan, he writes the show uh, The Strain on FX, and uh, man, the, just, the writing in here, I mean, it's not bad, like, I'm like, oh my god, so freaking cheesy, you know, the dialogue's pretty good, it's better than that Transformers, I want to see a warrant, my face is the warrant, oh my god, that still is memorable till today, damn you, Michael Bay, but uh, I will say that, you know, there are slow moments in here where you kind of slow down and then the first act I will say the first act like you divide this movie into three acts the first like 45 50 almost an hour because it's like a two hour and 15 minute movie something like that the first hour is almost a complete not a, a complete waste but there's like the first hour action scene and then you, you take a break and then there's another big action scene that is kind of towards the final act and I will say that the first, like, hours, this is the most slowest it as can be. The first act isn't the best. More of the second act and towards the end is the better part of the movie. Uh, it's just a slow opening, a slow beginning, that sort of thing where it's giving you the information. It's all good. You meet your characters. Sure, that's awesome. The characters are nice. They're relatable. They're cool. They're likable. But then again, it has that slow moment where there's this dialogue for ten minutes. And it's not a Quentin Tarantino film where you care about the dialogue. It's almost like... It's just some. It, it's like Michael Bay or whoever writes the dialogue in here. It's it puts you to sleep. It. I, I was only awake for like six hours when I went to go see this movie. I wasn't like awake the whole day where I was tired. I was awake, and I wanted to fall asleep because the dialogue was just like, yeah, man, I miss them. 
And then, like, it's just so quiet. The theater's so quiet, and there's no action going on. And literally for, like, 15 minutes, and then you're kind of like, it's slow. It's the pacing. It made it feel like a three-hour movie. When I walked out, I was like, it's finally over. It's finally over, man. Like, because the pacing in there, it has slow moments in there where you just... I'm not saying you don't care for the characters. You just don't care. You want to get onto the act. You're like, what about the senator? What about this? What about... You just want to go on... You know, like, what the hell's taking, you know, the, the, the bad guy so long to come and attack? You know what I mean? Like, it just takes time, slow moments, builds up character. It's all about the characters and their their mind, their, you know, their whole surviving. But the pacing, like I said, I just felt tired. I wanted to fall asleep during some. I literally was like... Also, there's this random time jump in the movie where it, it's like a, a, something big happens in the beginning... And then it's like five months later, and then it's kind of like so random. It's like Fantastic Four when it jumped a year later. It's not as bad as that, but I'm saying like there's a random time jump, and then like five months later, really? Five months already? Holy shit, like, you know, it just moves on so quickly. Then there are, you know, a few stupid things that you could tell Michael Bay or some of the people put in that felt so just didn't feel right for the movie, like stupid little gag jokes and everything. And this girl, she climbs up the roof, and she's just like... Ugh, she trips for no reason. Watch it, honey. Something like that. I was like, I'm gonna fall asleep. Like, there's a big scene that happens in the third act, and I was like, wait, wait, did that person? Wait, no, I thought it was that person. But there's the photo flying in the air. Wait, who's that person? Wait, 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 wait. Who, who, who got who? And and just you can't tell because. And then it's like, wow. Well, that was something. So, like I said, it, it's. For me, it's an okay movie. It's a good action film, but it's an okay movie overall. Uh, you know, do I think it's Michael Bay's best directed movie? No, but it, it definitely is way better than Age of Extinction. This movie, on the other hand, it was just okay. Is it worth watching in theaters now? If you, you have military background, you, you you obviously, we should all at least pay a little due respect to it, but um, those who really love, you know, military and have, you know, your dad was in the military or something, he hasn't really heard about this or doesn't know about it, take him out to it, man. Take him out to it. Take your mom, take your, now, I wouldn't say this is a date movie. <laughs> you want to go see 13 Hours? You want to see Ride Along too. Now, a date movie's more, I guess, a comedy. You want to, you don't want to take your date to this. But, uh, those who served, you know, God bless, take them out, man. Uh, ho hopefully, I hope they enjoy this movie, man. It's sort of, it kind of honors, uh, the soldiers, man. So, check it out for those who are in that field. Those who are, don't really care for, you know, military movies sometimes. I mean, I love Lone Survivor and I love American Sniper. Those two are still better than this movie. Like I said, this ain't a bad movie. But, uh... I say rental. Wait for rental. Those who don't really care for, you know, military movies or anything like that, or, you know, so it's another January movie. Wait for rental. Just just do that. So, thanks again, guys. Uh, I'm going to end up giving this movie a 7.4 out of a 10. Okay. It's an okay movie, man. I, I enjoyed uh, the action scenes. The acting was awesome. John Krasinski yelling in the guy's face. Ah! That was really cool. So, uh, thanks, guys. I'll be seeing you for Ride Along 2, uh, maybe Norm of the North, oh god, oh god, so we'll see, man. 13 Hours, The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi, have you guys seen it? If you have, comment down below, tell me what you guys thought about it, man. I'll be seeing you uh, later, subscribe if you want to support the channel, you really like the review, or if you just like my face, my punchable face, I've been told, subscribe. See you guys later, god bless.